Uh, my name is Yoshitake Kobayashi, and today I'm talking uh, about a uh, uh, civil infrastructure platform, uh, which is industrial grade open source base layer. Uh, before um, I'm starting to talk about CIP, I'd like to ex explain what CIP um, CIP is uh, one of the most uh, conservative open source projects in the Linux Foundation. But I think uh, this project is one of the most important projects for our civilization, civilizations. That's because uh, CIP oops, aims to provide an uh, open source base area for CIP related embedded systems, and which runs on the uh, infrastructure stuff. And we also work uh, closely with the upstream community. Uh, so work with upstream community is quite important concept for us because uh, without working with upstream, we cannot uh, be become realized to this kind of a concept. So a CIP uh, wants to create a base layer, but a base layer doesn't mean uh, whole distributions. Whole distribution is quite big, but we would like to concentrate to uh, build a very uh, limited, um, important stuff for our embedded use cases. So I'd like to say uh, our civilization runs on Linux. That's real. Uh, many uh, infrastructure-related stuff, such as transportation and energy or industry and healthcare, something like that, it already runs on Linux. Uh, for example, uh, for power plant, uh, turbine is controlling by Linux. So if the such kind of stuff uh, just stopped, it caused serious issues for our life. So there are some, some issues uh, to be solved. For example, I'd like to uh, explain about power plant system example. Uh, once we cre created a power plant, the life cycle is 25 to 60 years. So it's very long time. So when we create a power plant, we usually take three to five years for development. In this development cycle, uh, we also take a half year to four years for customer specific extensions to fit the customer requirement. And after we release uh, this kind of product, we also supply six to eight years, which means um, maximum 18 years, or uh, no, 13 years for supp uh, supply time, including a uh, development time. And then more than 15 years hardware maintenance. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, after the latest shipment. And I'd like to say uh, 20 to 60 years for product life cycle. And I direct to mention two years. What two years means CIP just started from April 2016, which means we now on two years old. But product life cycle, lifetime, is 60 years for the most case. So during this uh, product lifetime, things change a lot. There are one uh, typical example is IoT. IoT means uh, yeah, many things connected to the network uh, to um, optimize our life. And industrial IoT is also a similar concept. And which means uh, industry, even industrial area, uh, many kind of stuff are connected to the network to keep our infrastructures. 
And this kind of stuff needs to have uh, industrial grades devices, uh, quality, and also uh, security management stuff. So this kind of stuff has to be secure enough uh, to continue uh, to provide services. So there are some uh, problems. So in our use case, for especially for civil infrastructure platform case, we need to have very long time, uh, very long life support. And currently this long term support done by individual com com uh, company. So each company doing long term support. Even their uh, business area is quite similar. And the other uh, problem is we also are uh, doing a lot of effort to create an industrial grade software and industrial grade product uh, to have a robustness or secure and reliable. This kind of stuff is also done by individual companies. But we are doing very similar stuff. For example, we, uh, we would like to have real-time capabilities uh, to control turbines, but the other company also thinking about that. Um, this kind of stuff can be shared by the um, companies which have uh, similar uh, concerns. So the solution we need is we have to have long-term maintenance and also industrial grade. That two topics can be uh, solved by the collaborations. And CIP is our solution. That's why we started a CIP two years ago. And we'd like to establish an open source base layer uh, of industrial grade software to ensure the use and implementation of software building blocks for civil infrastructure systems. And now we have seven companies, and uh, one company, Moxa, is just joined uh, last December. So we uh, try to contribute uh, to the open source project individually and also uh, we have a budget to, uh, to, uh, to uh, contribute to the uh, other open source project which we required to have uh, our use case. This is a very basic concept uh, for the civil infrastructure systems. Then uh, yeah, from open source project we are uh, try to collect the uh, open source softwares uh, by managed by CIP, and then want to go to long-term support. This is the original concept when we started a CIP. And what CIP again is, our focus is open source base layer. Open source base layer is uh, industrial grade uh, core open source software components which includes uh, Linux kernel and very basic uh, software, something like glibc or busybox or something like that. And this uh, yeah, component is quite important for us, but this is, can be extended by other distributions because other distributions have a lot of open source software packages, can be used with CIP open source base layer. So this concept is uh, very important for uh, to realize a CIP because a CIP have a limited resource and very difficult to create whole distributions. So we started from very small, then extended to a bit, a bit, and again. So. Uh, from now, uh, I'd like to um, yeah, explain the latest uh, CIP status and activities. Um, when we started uh, CIP two years ago, uh, we uh, focused, at, at first we focused on super long-term support Linux kernels. 
Then uh, we move to focus to the uh, testing on real time and also um, build the environment for CIP base layer. So um, the first one is the current maintenance. We created a super long term uh, kernel based on the uh, Linux kernel uh, stable. And after that, uh, we uh, must uh, preempt RT patch on top of the CIP kernel. This is actually uh, based on the stable RT. And after uh, we uh, yeah, selected the CIP kernel, we also need to test the kernel. So we created a testing environment, uh, which is called the uh, border test, I will explain later. And finally, uh, yeah, we created the CIP core, which includes a CIP um, kernel and the uh, open source um, components. So um, when we started the CIP, uh, we need to select the uh, kernel versions. And at that timing, uh, we selected the Linux 4.4 as a first CIP long-term support kernel. And we also hired a maintainer uh, from community, and Ben Hatching is, uh, from CodeSync is uh, our CIP super long-term support kernel maintainer. And uh, uh, Linux 4.4120, a CIP 20, just released uh, on March 9th. So probably uh, most of uh, you uh, relate, um, belongs to some um, development, and maybe you know 4.4 .4 is L LTS, uh, not even a CIP. So why? Uh, what we are doing is uh, CIP just uh, not just uh, doing maintenance by my, by ourselves. Um, so we back, uh, so we backported some features from the upstream kernel for CIP kernel, but uh, this is very limited to make more secure, um, more um, to have more um, both support packages. So one key feature is security, and we backported the kernel self-protection project related features. And we also backported um, patches from uh, Siemens, uh, IoT 2000 series, and also uh, we actively backporting uh, many patches for Lunesas RZZ series. This kind of feature uh, is uh, now on CIP kernel. And we created a kernel, uh, CIP kernel maintenance policy, and the most important in our kernel maintenance policy is upstream first. So if we want to have some future backport in our CIP kernel, the future must be included in upstream first. Then back, we try to backport. So, um, I mentioned that some uh, feature backport is already done by CIP. It's actually uh, already on upstream. And uh, now uh, we have uh, yeah, around uh, four to six weeks uh, release cycles. And but before uh, CIP 120 is released, uh, as you know, there are huge issues on kernel security, uh, meltdown spectre. So we also um, yeah, investigating a lot and what kind of effects uh, will we have for that. So in that case, yeah, we have a bit longer release cycle. But mostly uh, four to six weeks uh, release cycle done by brain hatchings. And we're also working with um, LTS uh, stable release cycle. Uh, for example, uh, Ben Hatching uh, review uh, stable patches. So this is a quite small text, but um, Greg Hartman uh, uh, 
and just asking uh, reviewing patches for 4.4, and then review and find uh, some patches or like that. In this uh, review cycle, uh, there are some uh, patches which include, uh, which delete K3 here, but this uh, delete and uh, removable uh, makes a memory leak. So Ben Hutching uh, commented to this uh, kind of uh, mistakes. So this kind of work also uh, making more reliable for the stable kernel. And I would like to mention about out of tree drivers. We don't have out of tree drivers in CIP kernel yet. But um, yeah, of course, uh, this is open source. So anyone wants to have out of tree drivers with CIP kernel. But uh, this kind of stuff can be done by themselves. And um, CIP official kernel do not have any out of tree drivers. So now uh, we also need to consider our next CIP LTS kernel versions. Um, at the beginning, at the beginning uh, starting time or CIP, I mentioned a CIP kernel will be released every two to three years. And now CIP is two years old. So um, we are considering to have a next CIP kernel. And most important thing we considering is kernel version alignment. Now many um, yeah, uh, projects are using uh, long-term support kernel. So we at least want to select uh, Linux kernel with, uh, from LTS versions, but the other um, project also using LTS. For example, LTSI, AGL, and maybe Debian, and more. So we would like to uh, make some alignment with such kind of communities to share the effort for the maintenance. So to make it realize, uh, we are planning to have a face-to-face -face meeting uh, during Open Source Summit in June with a uh, uh, stable kernel maintainer and also our CIP kernel maintainer. The next thing we are doing is uh, real time. Uh, yeah, most of, uh, yeah, you know, still real-time Linux uh, patch is not upstream yet. But uh, to, have, uh, to make a controller stuff, we need real-time capability. So we are trying to help uh, real-time Linux project um, to become a gold member. And currently, we work together with a uh, real-time Linux project. And uh, uh, Daniel Wagner from Siemens is working uh, to become the maintainer uh, for, for, for uh, stable RT kernel. This is the best version of the CIP kernel. And currently, we're discussing how to take over the current maintainership from the, uh, Stephen Rostwell uh, to Daniel after 4.4 uh, maintenance period is done. Uh, for more information, you can find uh, this URL. And now uh, CIP, SLTS kernel is available. And that was re that's first CIP uh, real-time kernel was released in January. I think uh, January 2nd. And the latest one is a 4.4120 CIP 20 RT something. <laughs> and it's maintained by Daniel Wagner from Siemens and validated by him and also CIP. And yeah, after we release a CIP kernel, uh, we need to validate a CIP kernel itself. We created an environment for testing kernels, and that's called the Boda Desk. Um, Boda Desk uh, designed to test Linux kernel and base systems locally. 
by using uh, kernel CI and Lava. Uh, kernel CI and Lava is very, uh, mostly very common tools uh, to test kernels in community. That's why we selected both of two uh, components. But um, that kind of system usually working on the remotely, but we direct to test locally uh, to validate our embedded systems. So both at desk able to uh, connect to uh, devices that on desk. This is a concept why we call it uh, both at desk. And this is already available on the GitHub, uh, GitLab, and you can test um, by using it about a desk. And recently, we updated the kernel about a desk to include the latest kernel CI, and also uh, supporting to Renesas board. And then uh, we just recently test, uh, sharing uh, test result. Uh, by using email uh, mailing list. So if you're going to uh, uh, the CIP test result mailing list, you can find some results uh, testing, uh, testing done by Boda Desk. And currently, uh, Boda Desk uh, made by uh, background and uh, yeah, virtual machine box. And we direct to uh, development uh, through containers. So this is uh, currently under development. And we also want to collaborate with other testing projects, uh, which is using uh, Lava and kernel CI. Um, yesterday, uh, we had a uh, technical showcase, and there are one uh, demonstration which called, uh, uh, no, what's that, uh, Lava Inbox. <laughs> so this is also using kernel CI and Lava stuffs, just included one box to test our balls. This kind of uh, work also similar uh, concept with both at desk. So we direct to work uh, together uh, to realize this kind of stuff. Then the last one is our CIP uh, yeah, core packages. So it's just grayed out a uh, second step. We define the initial component set first, which includes libc, busybox, uboot, Linux kernel, something like that. That was less than uh, 10 components. But after that, we would like to define the component version, but to define component version, it's quite difficult. Because uh, we, would like to, we also would like to work with community. So, we decide to contribute upstream project and decide to Debian as CIP primary distrib uh, reference distributions. Uh, primary uh, reference distribution means uh, CIP will select uh, CIP core packages from Debian packages. And also uh, CIP would like to work with Debian community. Uh, recently, uh, now, and the reason why uh, we choose Debian is uh, Debian has wide community and also Debian has a, a very clear license um, cleaning process. And of course, we have already a Debian-based product in some companies. So that's why we select Debian. And to start collaboration with Debian, uh, we thought uh, long-term support is quite important project. So we decided, and uh, just uh, we decided uh, to support Debian LTS project uh, as a platform level. This is uh, not opened yet uh, because uh, we just uh, decided a few days ago uh, during a CIP governing board meeting. So we started to contribute uh, to Debian LTS and also Debian communities, which related to some uh, security staffs. And yeah, in this uh, Debian, uh, Debian also wants to have uh, security, um, some staging repositories uh, to security master. And this is a still ongoing project. 
and it is all, uh, all, uh, on the bug report track. So we like to uh, also support this kind of uh, yeah, work to be fixed. We are also working for that. So this is okay, skip. And, uh, and to make a CIP core packages, we also need a uh, build environment. So we created uh, one build environment which uh, have a Debian source code or Debian build pre-built packages with CIP kernel to have a minimum deployable based systems. And we call that this software as a CIP core. And current status is uh, we already uh, created uh, tools in this uh, GitLab repository, and some some of package, uh, some of boards include the Lunesas, Big Bone Black, Cyclone Five Stuffs, is already um, learn, able to run by using a CIP kernel with Debian source code. Maybe I just skip this. And there are some uh, many tools uh, already available. Uh, by using a Debian component, Debian binary packages or Debian source code. And there are at least three efforts are doing similar stuff. So in this kind of stuff could be used by uh, CIP and currently CIP using a Debian, but this one is uh, based on uh, full source code not able to get uh, binary packages. So we would like to uh, combine this kind of stuff to make uh, more easy to use to build our root file systems. So this is a tool, and the other way to have a root file systems, of course, we just use Debian itself. But uh, there are some gaps and common goals in between CIP and Debian. As you know, Debian is a very huge uh, distribution which includes uh, more than 25,000 source, source packages which can be generated, 67,000 binary packages. But CIP currently uh, focuses on less than 10 uh, packages. But the sub, uh, support term is quite different. Uh, currently, uh, Debian only supports five years. But CIP needs to support more than 10 years. Um, that's why we started to contribute to Debian LTS first to consider to extend the support term with the Debian community. And for uh, build systems, we uh, sometimes need to have uh, cross-build uh, capabilities, but Debian are uh, using uh, by native build. So there are some um, points we can be contribute for Debian cross. And open source license compliance issues, currently Debian moved to a new license format, which called Deb5. And this is very detailed the information and can be converted from SPDX files, which is standardized by Linux Foundation uh, project. So we currently considering to have a reviewed result with, for example, SPDX, then convert it to Deb5 and to also contribute to Debian community. So this is a kind of uh, way to contribute to Debian. So I also would like to mention uh, some of CIP members also interested in Yocto project. They want to use Bitbank with CIP uh, based components. So now we decided that Debian as a primary distribution and Debian source code have a five year support so to have this um, benefit in, with uh, Yocto project, we consider 
to make maybe a meta CIP layer. Um, but this is a kind of ongoing project. So the other stuff under discussion in CIP is we now started uh, yeah, considering a cyber security standards. Uh, IEC 26443 is a cyber security standard uh, which includes specific many specifications uh, to develop a secure industrial autom automation and control systems. Uh, this standard actually uh, defines the processes to develop secure products. Um, in this process, uh, they, uh, the specification also required lots of tests. But um, currently, uh, no, no uh, standardized test cases available, or we also would like to uh, have this kind of certified product, but we still don't study how to get uh, our product ready for the cybersecurity standard. So to realize this kind of stuff, uh, we consider to development uh, test cases and also recommended uh, setting ups will, will, uh, to be documented. This kind of, uh, if uh, this kind of work to be done by CIP, um, so CIP users also get the benefit to uh, certify that their product for this standard. So that's what we are going to uh, move forward. But uh, we are sure we not development procedure or certification schema because uh, this is uh, yeah, done by uh, organizations, finally. So, and question, 20 years from now, do you know? All right, from 20 years, we have uh, January 19th, 2038. So, this year 2038 is a broken issue if, you, if we want to have our product for more 20 years commitment. So, and to solve these issues, um, there are a lot of stuff need to be done. And we know uh, someone already working on these issues, like uh, Ant um, is working for Kernel, and the other person working for GDPC uh, to solve this uh, year 2038 for issues. So we also had our uh, discussion with uh, them and how can we collaborate to uh, solve these issues uh, during the last uh, ELC Europe timing. So, yeah, this is currently ongoing, uh, but um, um, unfortunately we haven't had any uh, yeah, output yet. So we also discussing a lot of stuff, um, functional safety and software update for industrial systems is also uh, maybe need to have, but for functional safety, um, there are also uh, uh, some project is running like a C2 Linux MP or something like that. Like that. And, but, uh, but this is very difficult issues. So uh, we'd like to, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, want to know what they are doing and also we'd like to decide how can we collaborate with them. And the, this one is uh, not under discussions, but I, I'd like to say CIP just joined uh, AGX Foundry as associate member. Uh, currently under discussion is what we can do uh, with them. Because um, um, yeah, AGX is trying to create uh, middlewares using uh, Docker or yeah, containers. But um, in the below, uh, we are using Linux. And this part also needs to be supported secure enough for longer time by to using uh, industrial area. So that's why uh, we uh, become an AGX Foundry Associate member. 
So next time, uh, maybe uh, we try to run uh, AJAX foundry component on CIP base layer. But currently, CIP base layer have a gap uh, to run AJAX foundry. For example, uh, AJAX foundry require Java. <laughs> but on CIP, I'm sure, uh, currently not includes uh, Java itself. Uh, but on Debian component uh, already includes Java. So maybe um, yeah, we can consider to create CIP kernel uh, with uh, CIP base layer and Debian packages, then try to run. <laughs> this is a, might be a story. So I'd like to uh, conclude my presentation. Uh, currently, uh, CIP is uh, focusing on open source base layer development. And we uh, focused on uh, several topics, uh, which include kernel maintenance, testing, and CIP core packages. And now we started the security stuff, and this kind of can be done by collaborations. Uh, we already started collaborating with uh, Debian community and real-time stuff project and AJAX Foundry. So we try to uh, extend this kind of collaboration to realize the CIP base layer. So I try to conclude my um, presentations, and our, yeah, I try to say our civilizations need an open source base layer of industrial grade software to make more stable for our infrastructure stuff. And CIP will provide this by using Linux. And to realize uh, CIP base layer, uh, we get the sustainability is uh, ensured by uh, working a big industrial and semiconductor companies, also uh, cross cooperation with uh, and building with mature open source products, such as Debian. And finally, uh, we'd like to say a collaboration is one of key component, uh, key concept for CIP. So that's all my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, any questions? Yes, please. Okay, uh, the question is, uh, yeah, the, uh, he's working for the company in Brazil, and in Brazil, uh, CIP is also beneficial for, uh, to realize their infrastructure. And his question is, how can they involve to uh, CIP? And uh, mm, that's, uh, I think, uh, yeah, please join. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, yeah. 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 And uh, this is also, of course, uh, this is open source project. Uh, you can uh, ask us any contribution uh, to CIP project. And uh, we have our open, open mailing list, and which is open for everyone, not just limited to the CIP okay. members. Um, we have a wiki page, uh, which includes uh, how to, for example, how to build CIP core and how to use the CIP kernel, something like that. So I, I would like to provide uh, this kind of information. Maybe I have some, uh, hang on a sec. All right, uh, 54, no, 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 54, no, 54. Sorry, um, maybe I need to finish my presentation first. Okay, then, okay, this is the information. <laughs> you can get it. Um, yeah, I will uh, upload uh, with this information. Yeah, uh, do the uh, schedule, schedule, 
Okay, thank you very much. And any other questions? All right. Okay, um, that's a good question. And his question is, uh, yeah, we have an upstream policy. Even we have an upstream policy, uh, the ch uh, changes for kernel uh, is made every day. And after six years or 10 years, they will change a lot, which includes API changes or something like that. In that case, even we have an upstream first policy, we are very difficult to backport from the upstream. And his question is, how, uh, you know, what do we think about uh, upstream policy, even this kind of stuff happens? And my answer is, we know uh, this kind of uh, issues will be, um, yeah, will be become real. Uh, but uh, if we, no, just, oh, sorry, this is in my opinion. Uh, even that, uh, if we consider to upstream first, um, we know what uh, upstream thinking and what is the most important to way to backport it. Even this is uh, quite difficult. So sometimes we have to make two drivers for, up, for up, uh, upstream and uh, uh, downstream but uh, maybe a concept, some part of concept for the development could be shared by each other. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, please uh, uh, yeah, make a bit loud voice. Yeah, I cannot hear your voice. Sorry. Um, so there are some possible uh, cases uh, will be happens. Um, even we have an upstream policy, uh, we have to consider to uh, case by case basis. Um, so uh, that is uh, his comment, and uh, yeah. So this kind, yeah, I understand that. But um, yeah, in that case, um, that kind of stuff is uh, prob probably out of tree. So, and also specific to the uh, developer. So need to be supported by themselves. So we would like to have a CIP kernel itself and keep it stable. 
So which means uh, the developer also uh, can be maintained with that uh, CIP kernel, even after the uh, original stable is uh, already uh, um, supported, we have to support CIP kernel. So that's kind of you know, things can be done, I think. Um, so, any other comment or questions? Yes, please. Okay, uh, the question is, do I have a summary uh, to show a CIP version and release timing? And the answer is, sorry, I don't have. <laughs> and yeah, we can check the Git log <laughs> yeah, to have a, get the summary. Uh, but currently, we don't have a yeah, page for the, to summarize that. Uh, so you can, uh, huh? Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. Okay, uh, that's a good comment. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and someone said, uh, uh, someone asked me uh, why uh, we said, uh, why we are saying uh, yeah, CIP kernel is supported by 10 years, why don't we uh, ask kernel.org to show the release pages <laughs> or something like that? This is a might be a, we have to consider. But uh, yeah, currently we have a back three, uh, backport patches, so we should consider, um, yeah, so what can be done? <laughs> All right, thank you very much. And other questions, comment? All right, it's more sober time. Thank you very much for attending.